My name is Nat Hines. I'm a professor at Rockefeller and a Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator. Um, we study the detailed function of neurons in the nervous system. We specialize at trying to first identify what the normal molecular properties are of neurons and then determine how they're changed in the cases of disease or drug addiction or behavioral influences. So it's been known uh, that the mammalian cerebral cortex contains probably dozens of different types of small cells called inner neurons that are critically important for its function. Now, the problem with this particular class of cells is they are relatively rare and they function in many different ways and have different morphologies. So, what we've set out to do in these studies was to define uh, more precisely particular classes of inner neurons and try to discover uh, an inner neuron population that we could study that would have a specific impact on, on uh, mammalian behavior. Miho Nakajima started some time ago uh, characterizing broader classes of inner neurons that are marked by uh, molecules that we know are expressed in them. Through many rounds of experimentation, she was able to refine her analysis to a very small population of inhibitory inner neurons that's present in the prefrontal cortex of mice and to study the functions of that inner neuron population. And she noticed during those studies that this inner neuron population expressed a very interesting molecule called the oxytocin receptor. Oxytocin is a prosocial hormone that's been implicated in a variety of different social contexts for aiding in interactions between uh, either mothers and pups or males and females of a particular species. Oxytocin is known to involve in the social behaviors, especially the female behaviors. Uh, so we have a three-chamber social interaction test. It's pretty well-known uh, social test in mice. The test has uh, three rooms, and each side room has a, a cup. One cup ha have a male mouse in it, the other cup have object in it. So the mice have a choice, either m mouse or object. So usually mice are social animals, so they s usually spend a lot longer with a male mouse than the object. But once we manipulate this very small population, the cortex, in the medial prefrontal cortex, and only at the extra stage, sexually receptive stage, they prefer Lego than the male mouse. As a consequence of the fact that these cells express the oxytocin receptor, it gives us an avenue to try to understand what they do in the nervous system and how they modulate behavior in response to oxytocin. So, uh, what Miho was able to do is intervene in their function in a number of different ways and show that they impact a very specific aspect of female sexual behavior. So Miho found this very interesting cell type and found that these cells have the oxytocin receptor, but we don't know anything about the cells themselves, what they do, how they respond physiologically. And I did. Uh, electrophysiological recordings measuring the electric activity of these cells and what you see is in general the cells are very silent they don't have any spontaneous activity but once you apply oxytocin to these cells uh, what you can see is that they show these electrical discharges so from minus 70 millivolts they go up to about plus 20 millivolts and this only happens once you apply oxytocin. This firing of the action potentials with the oxytocin is enhanced in female animals compared to male animals, which nicely fits to Mio's behavioral data. So I think two of the most interesting aspects of what we done, we've done here is to demonstrate that there is a very small population of neurons in the frontal cortex that can modulate behavior between female and male mice at a very specific point in the estrus cycle, and also to demonstrate that that modulation, that behavioral effect that's so specific, um, responds to an internal cue, the prosocial hormone oxytocin. 
it helps explain why social behavior is context dependent and also physiologically dependent. Um, and since oxytocin responses have been studied in so many different parts of the brain, um, it's clear that a hormone like this can impact behavior in different ways, in different contexts, in response to different physiological cues.